Hi everyone, my name's Jer and I'm going to take you through Magic Potions with Liquid Simulation by 2 Ginge for the Unity Asset Store. Let's jump straight into it. So what you've got in this scene here is a lineup of all seven bottles within the pack. Um, each of these bottles has a cork, a, a liquid volume, a bottle mesh, a label, and then when you drop them, uh, they also reveal that they have a shattered a bottle mesh, the cork will fall out itself. You have some particles that display when it's dropped, and lastly, a puddle that will appear. Uh, all of these things are controllable, so uh, how long do they stick around once they've been smashed? Um, how long does it take for them to scale? What's their fade out value? Things like that. Nice and easy, all set up for you there. Secondary to that, we have uh, pouring functionality in this pack. So when a bottle has no cork present and is tipped past its, its tipping point, uh, it starts emitting particles. These particles basically are just controlled through the standard particle system, so you can control things like uh, how quickly they emit, how many there are, uh, what their physics kind of tells them to do. And <clears throat> this second bottle here, we have a, a small mesh on top that's invisible above the opening that when these particles collide with fill up or tell this bottle's liquid volume to increase in scale so um, basically you get the effect of uh, this liquid filling up this one here uh, and secondarily to that we have uh, the color blending so as you might have seen uh, with this blue liquid pouring into this pink one I changed halfway through to red there but as this blue one fills into this pink one it turns it a bit more purple so you can determine how much that color value uh, blends as they're tipping or whether it does at all so you can just turn that off if you don't like it and lastly we have animated textures for the top of our, our liquids so I'll just take that off maximize and we'll have a look at that in the scene view <clears throat> so we have uh, a couple of frames of animation on top of this surface here so if I pull the liquid out you can see that the animation is only taking place on the surface and the rest of this liquid doesn't have a texture displayed on it. We can actually add a texture that overlays the color here um, and we can also animate that but in this case I've just chosen to show you the top so a use case for this might be that you want bubbles popping on the top but then when you look at it from the side you want bubbles rising up you might do that with a particle system instead and have some opacity on the liquid itself. Um, and in terms of opacity, I'll show you quickly uh, what that looks like here. So you can see straight through this, this liquid, I've got a bit of opacity on that and it deforms what's behind it somewhat, kind of like you would expect in real life. Obviously not exactly the same, but in a stylized manner like the rest of these elements within this pack suggest. So that's kind of the introduction. What I'm going to do from this point on is start breaking down how each section works. So I'll take you through how the physics works, um, how the pouring works, uh, things like the shader controls, uh, and the animated texture cutoff layer, and the mixture of colors, all of that. So stay tuned and I'll, I'll dig into those. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to show you how now the physics is working. So how we determine how much the liquid surface moves and whatnot. So if you grab, get your bottle here, the parent object um, has all of the main scripts on it. But on the uh, liquid object itself, we have a liquid volume animator script. So as you can see, this liquid is just a mesh model to be completely full, uh, take up all that space in that cavity in the bottle. So you can see we've modeled an empty cavity there. <coughs> um, this script basically does all, all of the liquid simulation. So if you turn this debug anchor on, you can see that the way we're uh, determining how this liquid surface behaves is through this anchor anchor here, uh, this pendulum style anchor. So if we move that around, um, you can see very much standard pendulum behavior. So this object has a mass, uh, it's connected to this face, and this face will try and face directly opposite to the, the direction this object is hanging. So if we move this around, uh, you can see the pendulum's informing how that face moves. So what we can do is to control the amount of movement that takes place when we move the bottle is select a liquid you can put your anchor length up to two for example and we'll play the play the scene again if i grab this bottle and i move it now because the pendulum is much longer uh, and all the movements happening down here at the pendulum um, there's less movement happening up the top here at the point where the pendulum connects to the surface so 
it gives the effect of having a thicker liquid basically. You can see the same as you rotate. I'll reset that. Okay, so I'll, I'll change the liquid uh, anchor length, sorry, back to 0.3. I like 0.3, it reminds me of kind of what you'd expect to see with water, something like a liquid as thick as water. Um, this potion I've set at 0.3. Uh, so you can turn that debug anchor off if you don't want to see it, it's just there for your sake. Um, we also have a liquid level which only updates as you play the scene so I'll, I'll play the scene to show you that select the liquid and we change the liquid level that basically gives the effect of emptying and, and, and filling the bottle so as you saw in the, the pouring demonstration before we're just increasing this value based on the amount of particles hitting uh, an invisible mesh at the top here that, that tells this object how much to, to fill up or decrease when it's tipped uh, <coughs> On top of that, we also have dampening, which allows you just to dampen the movement of that, that liquid surface. So if I grab the bottle, this does update um, in, in play mode. So I'll move the bottle around, moving as it's meant to, go to liquid, change the dampening up, and I'll move this around, and that's not going to move much at all. If I then go back to the liquid and put my dampening back down slowly, it will actually animate as it was. So you know, you could kind of give the effect of slowing time here. And one other thing we've included, just as a novelty um, control element, is you can change the direction of gravity. So I'll, I'll put the debug back on so you can see how that's working. Right now we're at negative one, so down. If I press one in there, it's going to flip up. So the cavity is at the bottom and gravity is now facing upwards. This is just in case you have a game where you flip the gravity of your scene, but because this is controlled by a shader, um, essentially you'll you'll need to flip this independently. So now I'm going to take you through the smash functionality that we have included in this pack. So if you select the bottle uh, parent object, uh, you'll see that it has a rigid body. Um, that rigid body will allow us to simulate gravity. So um, whether we want to drop the bottle or not, I'll just show you what that looks like. Cool. So I'll play that again. So if you select the bottle, <coughs> you can change this rigid body settings as you usually would with any other type of object. Um, all these objects underneath uh, then obviously don't need their own rigid bodies because they're using the parent's rigid body there. <coughs> Excuse me. So attached to, attached to the uh, parent object, we have the bottle smash script. And this script really helps us keep track of where all the independent objects within our bottle uh, are at any one time. So uh, in here you can see we have a space for the cork so you'd simply just select this cork object and drag it and place it under there uh, as you would with all of these other pieces. So liquid, get the heart liquid, um, glass, heart bottle, uh, glass shattered, I'll show you that quickly. Um, it would be this invisible object here. Whoop. I'll turn, I'll turn uh, that off play mode for a second to show you without dropping it. There we are. So what we've got is a pre-shattered version um, of this this bottle mesh. Um, we've just used the tool to generate this one, but you could model your own. And then what we've done is uh, constructed all of those pieces, um, and they do in fact, as an exception to all of these other objects here, have their own um, rigid bodies and mesh colliders so they can resolve their own physics upon the shatter event. So basically all that happens is when this parent object hits the ground, um, we, we actually turn on this heart bottle smashed object and then the physics just resolves itself really um, because these these uh, objects are all packed tightly together and they all have their own um, convex mesh collider. Um, they naturally want to push away from one another or, or resolve their physics as they would be expected to. So I'll just quickly get back to where we were. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the glass shattered here. Label, if you had a label, um, basically all this, all putting it in here would do is uh, despawn it on collision events so you don't have a silly looking label uh, just sitting there on the ground. Despawn time. Uh, now that's the time uh, that the entire parent object will uh, take to despawn once it's shattered. And I'll show you here if I can stop clicking buttons without intending to. So I'll just turn gravity on, watch the smash event, and five seconds is about to finish. 
and there we go five seconds is done the objects disappeared um, some of these other objects uh, looked after underneath this script will disappear or despawn before uh, the parent object does um, but this is just to tidy up everything at the end so you can make that as long or as short as you want the effect now that's just a smash particle effect we've got here that plays on the collision event so whatever particle system you you put in here um, that will play upon the collision event and the splat that's just simply um, a, a prefabbed uh, red splat that that spawns on the location that the bottle will smash at uh, the splat mask is important uh, important uh, you, you want to probably set up a ground object so in this scene uh, i have an object here and that is on the ground layer and uh, that's just to make sure that the splat doesn't stick on anything else that we don't want it to um, so it wouldn't if it hits another bottle the splat won't start on the bottle it will continue through to the ground and only show on the ground there um, we have the max splat distance so that's the distance at which the splat will show upon the ground layer um, so the object has to be within uh, this this distance this number so five currently is set if you set it to point one it literally has to be touching the ground um, with five we give it a bit of leeway so even if the bottle doesn't quite make it to the ground before it shatters um, you'll still see the splat on the ground itself the shatter at speed so what that is is um, a number that allows us to determine um, another break condition for the bottle so if the bottle moves uh, or decreases in velocity um, quickly uh, that will then break so it doesn't necessarily have to collide with something this is just in case uh, you need a backup for your collision so if the collision doesn't you know detect properly um, the bottle stopping its velocity changing quickly uh, will actually break it so um, in theory if you had that set um, quite low and say if you had this set up for VR your character was holding the bottle and it moved its arm quickly the bottle could break um, but we do allow you to uh, edit that uh, or turn that off or turn that function off by just saying only allow a shadow on collision event um, and here we have a, a secondary option that allows you to uh, stop shattering occurring from collisions or velocity um, and, but you can still shatter uh, through code if you need to so lots of control here <coughs> uh, and this color I'll just quickly show you in a different scene um, we'll get the demo scene up with the pouring again we won't save any of that and yeah, I'll just look over here so uh, this color allows you to override the color of the liquid in code so if I quickly just show you what that looks like so right now um, this color is red we're overriding the the default color which we had selected which is black here and we have a script set up that will reset the colors I'll just turn those on and turn on the pouring animation and what you see is when we override the the color will actually change here so uh, if you're overriding with code this will just update in the inspector to show you what's going on now I'm going to run you through how the pouring works for magic potions um, so it's quite straightforward um, there is a pour liquid script on the bottle uh, on the parent object of the bottle that you would want to be pouring um, on this script we have uh, the rate of flow which controls uh, how much of the liquid pours out when you tip it so I'll show you here um, uh, that's a 0.5 now and if I put that up it, the rate of flow will increase um, I'll just turn it off and turn it on again let's see set that to 5 it's not as drastic as it sounds um, the rate of flow is just faster so there you go the, all, all of the parts um, the volume being 100 came out in a much quicker time than they did when they were set lower. Um, I have a reset color script here that resets and refills the bottle um, when this timer runs out. There we go. Um, that's just for our testing purposes. This script is included so you can use that if you want to. Um, not exactly sure why you would or how you would but it is there. Okay so I'll set that back to 0.5. <clears throat> and on the receptacle here you can see there's an absorber object on top of it so what this is um, is an object that contains a liquid absorption script um, it has a particle value there which is 0 
3 right here. And what that does, it says, um, when a particle from this bottle collides with this one, fill up this volume by 0 0.003 um, of, the, of the volume total. So uh, I'll show you how that works. If I set that to, to 1, oh, let's set it to 0 0.01. Um, and then we will grab this bottle and go back into side on view so you can tip it straight in there and it feels much much quicker so each particle is now filling at 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.1 instead of 0 0.003 I think 0 0.003 is probably uh, better for us there so play that again All right um, so as I was saying um, with this pour liquid script, all you need to do is drag in the smash script. So you grab the ink bottle pouring that contains the smash script. So that will fill that in there. You grab the liquid object, so ink bottle liquid, controlling transform, which is the ink bottle pouring um, parent object, and then you have a particle system uh, which does the pouring, which handles the pouring animation. So there's a particle system here, right at the top of this bottle at the neck, and once the uh, bottle tips past a certain point, which we calculate based on the liquid anchor, which I should turn that back on so we can see that. So with the liquid anchor on, you can see that when the bottle turn, tips past a certain point, um, we're using a dot product to calculate uh, when to begin pouring. So pretty straightforward. You can change that in code, uh, it's hard coded in there. And, and then the particle pouring system, if you click on that system, <clears throat> it's just got all the standard controls you'd expect like a normal particle system so you can control everything here and then override those uh, controls through the poor liquid script um, and that pretty much covers all of, all of the uh, settings to do with the pouring so uh, feel free to play around with that use it however you like and just make sure that the object that you're using to pour into does have an absorber and then um, you'll be all, all fine there. Immediately you need to, to drag in the smash script of that bottle so it knows where to point uh, the value of the liquid. So recently we've added uh, a component to the shader that allows you to change the transparency of the liquid volume so if we just go to the liquid object scroll down to the material here you can see there's a volume fade um, setting so if you put that at zero you can't see through the volume at all if you put that at one you can see through it quite a lot I like it somewhere in the middle here uh, so you get a bit of the color of the the liquid but you can still see through um, to the objects behind and that also distorts the objects behind a little bit not exactly as it would in real life but um, close enough to give the effect. Uh, so yeah, feel free to use that and I'm looking forward to see how, seeing how you use that in your projects.